Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. Oh, have I got a haul to share with you. Yes, it is garage sale season here in our area and me and Alex, Alex and I are having so much fun going. So we're actually splitting this up into two videos because the haul is quite big and I kind of have to position myself so you're gonna see different parts of our garage. Um, yeah, to share a haul with you or it'd be way too long and I can't do that many makeovers in one video and keep it all, all a shortened video. So we'll start right off with sharing a bit of what was out there when we visited some of the garage sales. Oh no, we're not going to share everything or we'd be here all day. So just a little bit of some of the garage sales that we went to. Alex's vehicle. What? Uh, oh, it's cool. He's talking about the farm. We didn't listen to the whole thing, but he's talking about the farm and. Oh my god. Yes, yes. It, it was really cool. Thank you so much. <laughs> but I'm like, I need to put it in my vehicle because, but I haven't been to, you know, there very often. So. If you're a regular to our channel, I'm talking to the lady that gave Alex a whole bunch of the electronics from an estate sale, a family's estate sale, and that's where he shared the voice of the gentleman describing the farm and the history of the farm, and I just ran into her at this garage sale. I'm like, oh, and we had drove Alex's car that day, and I have the tape in my vehicle, so I wasn't able to get with her. Usually, we run across each other at the local Goodwill, but the pickings have been slim for both of us, so we have ventured out to these garage sales. There's so my uh, one missing and there's two duplicates. Yeah, I have. Well, that's my name, and then Marie's my middle name. So, <laughs> oh, okay. so you have actually three Yvonne's. Have you got? Have you got? Have you got four sisters? <laughs> nope. <laughs> you don't have an Anita or Zoe there. So, <laughs> like that is funny. Dish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Ten dollars for that. We'll be back too. Not much. We're going to Kalamazoo in a few weeks. What? Yeah. Seriously? Are you in school? I'm going to say you look familiar. Yeah. I'm, very, I'm the nurse at the school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. They just put the back there on there because they're going to be eating it still. Uh -huh. And that is big one. Oh, to have a nice day. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Got a few charges. Cincinnati Reds pen. Those are cool. Mm hmm. Those are very nice. I just pulled our little clock. I don't know. I just picked it up. I thought it looked neat. Didn't that have a key with it? Yeah, it has the key. The back's falling out, it looks like. Enough. It's a security light. Brand new. Brand new in box. Uh, it's just motion sensor. LED. LED, yeah. And a pack of, and a rest bag, and a pack of batteries. Uh, come in handy. Show my stuff. It's Honker easier. Truck. Oh, look at that. Get that closer. It needs cleaned, but... Oh, it's metal. Mm-hmm. That's cool. A lot of times we'll have the date stamped on the bottom. 
Not this guy. <coughs> Mark's Toys. Oh. Hustler. Hustler. Uh, I gotta look that up too. It's in good shape though. Uh, everything's still there. It's some kind of pull toy maybe, because there's a little string on the back. Well, if you pull it out, does it wind up the wheels and then you let it go? Let go. Let go of the car. Crash. That thing is fast. It still works. That's cool. Yeah. That's what I thought. I thought it's in good shape. I should just grab it. Um, some Indiana farm license plates. And you got all these cow, cow sheep tags. Why well, one of the tags? Do you want to show the farm? People don't know what the farm is. You want to see what they look so it says farm products on the bottom of them. So this was a farm, and then these were the old vintage cow tags. Mm -hmm. So some of them were still on chains, some of them were still on chains, and I had to be really careful when I was picking because they had some needles in there. So, yeah, so I just wanted the chain because that darn Instagram. There's that one cool You did get one. a cool. There we go. That's what he was looking for. The Indiana. There you go. Ones. Just a cool color on yep. it. Cool color. Old placemats. Made out of. What is this? Is it a bamboo? A bamboo, yeah. And it's got bamboo on the front of it. This one had some paint on it, but there's seven more of them all in there. So I thought those were cool. Vintage. I don't know if this is a Bennington mug or not. It's made in Japan. Mm -hmm. If it is a Bennington mug, it's pretty good. Pretty good value on that. And I got this little cow mug. The little tiny cow mug. He's got some kind of number on the bottom of him. But yeah. You can show mine, it's fine. Yeah. You grab this. It's a milk tester bottle. Milk tester bottle. I put flowers in it. The fake, my little. You got your. I got. Your bluebirds. I got some, some bluebirds. I picked up that one. It was a Kentucky, Kentucky Derby, Derby glass. Needs a bath. It went crazy at the auction. And they did go crazy at the auction. That's why I picked it up. And there was another little bird. I think he's metal. Yeah, he's some kind of metal. Hello, little birdie. There's your other blue bird. So this was a little bit different. That's a, a Fenton bird. bird. So, oh, that's a Fenton bird. Which actually, it's in a different position than I see most yeah. Fenton birds in. It was blue, so that caught me. And then that one just caught my eye. I wish he had her. I bed. wish he had her friend, but he was he was the only one. Um, yep, those were they weren't Bibles, but they were just little children mass books. So that kind of went with my ooh. Like a pro basketball stars in history. It's got all these oh. pro basketball players and. But years. will Alex resell that? Maybe not, because he really likes his basketball. <laughs> True. Uh, these, I didn't know what they were, but the I just box. threw them in at the pile. Oh. They're the traveling water box. Oh. Yeah. That's neat. Which they might not have any value, but. But, yeah, you know, when you're paying a group price. You got a. I got another boom. Another boom. Another boom for my display. This is a clock. Uh, it's actually battery powered and it's got temperature. It's an anatomically correct clock. Well, a lot of them have wires that you'd actually, that might be part of it. Yeah, this is part of it. So it's, this sits on the outside of the house. So yes. it tells you what the outside and inside of your house is. Okay. Yes. That little thing goes with it. Mm -hmm. Which I don't know if I want 
<laughs> but right now it's neither 77 or 75 in the garage. <laughs> it was cooler than outside. I just like those little thumbtacks. They're old. Look at, I could use those on something. On the have, well, on the display too. Yeah, cool. they just, they just have like little flowers. So, pick those up. And then I don't know. I it was. I thought it was neat. That looks like the pocket watch off the rabbit. On, uh, <laughs> yeah, Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. Oh, he's checking his time. Ready. There's not. It's really lightweight, so. Then you got some. Yeah. Oh, and then some I got really some old really old scissors. So. Rusty. Oh, well, that's how we we'll cut our hair this weekend, Alex. <laughs> so, uh. I don't know if they'll cut anything, but. You get a haircut and a tennis shot all at once. Okay, so we got that box. Oh. So it's, it's a spotlight. Like a, it's a, it's a, I think it's a tail light. For is it an a tail car. light? Or is it a like a shining light? Like you're looking for cattle, lost cattle, and you put it, attach it to your an extra light? I don't know. We're, we're going to make up our own story because we're not positive. Because it's too new to be a. What is a tail light? Well, it might hook on to like the, the uh, cattle bumpers that people have on there. Mm -hmm. Oh, some bubble lights. Now oh, this those, this those was from a different garage. Right? Yeah, this was from a different garage sale that we oh, stopped so you at. Did go to a different sale. Well, Fremont had their um, citywide sales, but there, we were too early. Most of them were not open, so um, you got those for a dollar. Two lights for a dollar, and then I got these Pokemon crayons for a quarter. Which the box is in rough shape, but the crayons themselves. Sell so right. for like 15 bucks for some reason. Oh, look at the horses they got. Some muscular Clydesdales. Mm -hmm. Ceramics. I think they're molds. That's cool. Definitely um, a mini. The cats. Mini -mini. Oh, and then you got these cool cats. I think these cats are so cool. 1977, it's dated on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, like it says ceramic. But. L A S. That might have been just like their name. These might have been uh -huh. yeah, they painted it in a ceramics class. They did a really good job. They did a really good job. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Very cool. The trumpet. <laughs> Which, it sounds like a trumpet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's got a little bend in there. I mean. It's definitely vintage, but... Does it have a mouthpiece in there, too? I didn't nope. see one. But uh, usually people buy a new mouthpiece anyway. Yeah, but it's cool. Cool. I looked it up online. It goes for about 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, That's pretty good. So we got this trombone. Oh, that's got some things in it, too. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Well, some Let's... things in that, some bends in the metal, but they're nice vintage instruments. And you got this cookie jar. Look at her. I wonder if she was done in ceramics too. I don't know. I can't tell. Was there a date or anything on her? No. She's in good shape. Yep, no date. No date. Nobody signed. So, so that's what we got. Awesome. So Alex shared the smalls with you all. So I will share the larges because that's what I picked up. So this all right here is from the auction house. So we got some galvanized. I, I, couple bucks. It, none of this was over ten dollars. I am positive. So I just. And there was something about these boxes that just caught my eye because of the, you know, I had the galvanized on it. I, I don't know. With the army green, are they something to do with army? I don't know, but I thought maybe I can remake those. Love the galvanized. I think I did pay $10 for that. Then I got this really old box, which I thought, oh my gosh, wouldn't that look great with some of the papers on it for five? 
a couple galvanized buckets and I decided I'm gonna start selling those um, some of these in the booth. and then this little wooden chair Chris of course Chris was with us so uh, two dollars for that and that was you had to buy something you kept you know how they at auctions they throw stuff in and then I, I did buy this medium-sized ladder because actually people have been coming into the antique store looking for them so I think I paid five bucks for that and then I think it was two bucks for this old just galvanized neat little piece it's missing its top um, we'll get that cleaned up and probably put that in the booth and of course ran across a yard sale that had a couple old windows I love the hardware I love the six panes and then we got some old piece of wood probably from some type of a bed I don't know a mirror maybe I got another little ladder I think that was a that was an estate sale which I got these two pieces, these little benches also. She said that was part of her sibling's shop project. So that was cool. So yeah, the estate sales are hard because you never, sometimes they group the whole price in together. And then at the same estate sale, I got this. Um, yeah, I can either use it as display or I think somebody would love it for their plants. I would not repaint it. I just tried to fix that because it won't, it won't stay up. But wait till you see my next find, guys. It's flying in right now. Oh my gosh, look at this. So, the uh, yeah. So, yes, I saw this. I We stopped. I said, hey, how? what do you want for that? And she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, 20 bucks? She goes, how about 10? I think, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, she lowballed me. All right, then I'll take that absolutely love it i'm going to keep this piece for myself i love all the rustiness i need to get some more of that weather resist like we used on those outdoor chimes that we got so yeah i'll find a place for this big butterfly absolutely gorgeous so love it so yes keeping that for myself what would you uh, ten dollars <laughs> i thought it was a steal and we fit it in the car if you enjoyed today's video there will be a few little makeovers if you want to stay and watch those don't do a lot of signs here on the channel even in for in our booth really until i find vintage pieces like this for a couple bucks i love the detail on it it's cost efficient when it's only a couple bucks so i like to look on pinterest or instagram and see any kind of old wording that are salvage pieces and try to reproduce them. So the first things first, I'm going to go ahead and take these extra pieces of wood off. And of course, somebody had some stickers that they look like stamp stickers, which are really old and get those off the back of this. This is one of those pieces that I feel is going to cause my white paint to yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with a couple coats of shellac, letting it dry in between. So this is a sealer. It blocks that stain from bleeding through. Getting this all up painted up and now it's dry i like the kills paint primer in the white is my go-to paint and using my true coat 360 handled sprayer anytime i can but now that the paint is dry i'm going to go back in and i'm going to distress this piece using my orbital sander Off to my Cricut I go to come up with a similar type. I love signs that have different fonts on them so I can't necessarily always say that I remember what fonts I use as I'm working through it but yep just seeing whatever's pleasing to my eye changing it around as I group it together.
So as you see, I like to use my stencil brush and the swirl technique to get minimal paint on and go back with a second coat to make sure that I've got everything covered and it's nice and dark. And then using the blow dryer to help dry it in between and then the blow dryer to help get that vinyl. I like the Oracle 651, it sticks really well, but I need to make sure that it's not going to pull off what I had just painted on that board. So then after getting all my little stickers off there, I then go back in and I sand it, which seems kind of silly since I just painted two coats on, but there's something about getting enough paint on and distressing it to look old than not having enough paint on to fill in the letters. So after I get that all dusted off, I do seal it in with a coat of polycrylic. such a round robin game of these windows not that we're testing them for lead but that the lady that purchased them actually purchased them from my father-in-law now we don't share a lot of his work on our channel but i've shared the pieces that he's made and he actually makes things out of old barn wood he works with another guy they take down barns and a lot of times you find these old windows and then he resells them or well, he doesn't make any projects out of them, but he was over, noticed the windows and knew who I had bought them from. So he's like, hey, I definitely know that they have led. So we're showing you how quickly these, yes, they tested positive for lead. So now we're going to have to treat these a little bit differently in our protection of ourselves. So Chris is going to remove the hardware, but you need to protect yourself by having a mask and any of the um chippings i guess you'll say need to be swept up and taken care of differently not just thrown in a trash and then when it comes to sanding i'm going to go ahead and sand them outside still using a dust collection so that i can separate out the lead parts but that's exactly what you know you just have to take care of yourself not that you have to throw these old windows away you don't want to lick them you don't want to breathe them in and i'm going to be sealing them up see I'm using my handheld Ryobi one so I can collect all what comes in that sucks it up into the dust collection along with a fan to blow any away from me and then I'll clean it up and discard of it properly. A little bit of care in taking the proper precautions to protect yourself you can still salvage these old windows. So now I've got them all cleaned up, I've got the glass all taped off on both sides because a lot of times when I'm doing something on the window, I won't necessarily paint the back as I seal it in with um, brown paper, but because of the lead, I'm going to go ahead and seal the back of these in also. So I taped off both panes, sides of the panes of the glass, and now I'm just getting them cleaned up. So I'm going to go ahead and mask back up because I like to distress throwing some of that underneath paint. So this shouldn't throw as much of anything because it's really going to be sanding off the paint that I put on, but still to mask up and have fans going as I'm distressing it. thing I always see at the thrift store are these flags and it always makes me sad but I'm happy to run across 
when I was searching for something else, I ran across how to put them behind glass. So for $5, I picked up this beautiful embroidered star flag. Oh, anyway, so yes, now I've learned how to fold them, how to not put the tacks through them, to attach them to the window. You don't cut it. It's just a folding technique and then putting a cardboard or a piece of paper backing on it will hold the window, the flag in place on the back of the window. Just think this this is a great way to reuse an old flag usually we always have a flag on our front porch we have a local american legion that has a mailbox that you can drop your old flags in and discard them so that is one option if you do not know what to do with an old tattered flag you don't just <laughs> throw it away in the trash. I just wanted to share that with you in case you didn't know there are donation places that will discard of old flags properly. Even though I am happy to pick them up and make something out of them in the thrift store. So you see the tacks are tacked into the wood holding the one side down and now I need to put the backing on it to keep it from flopping over keep it nice and tight so that's why I left a little bit of an outer edge of the wood showing so that I wasn't gluing the flag itself but I was just gluing the paper this is a roll of paper that you get it's construction grade that you get at the like Menards or you can order it off Amazon. I use it a lot to cover up our work tables and also to put on the back of things that I make to hang on the wall. So yes, just some hot glue will just make this nice and tidy. I'll add uh, some eyelets to it to hang the back of this. I know where my wood is, so I will go through the wood putting the eyelet and then taking some nice heavy wire because old windows are heavy. So you want to have the proper gauge of wire to hang up a hold window. For the second window, I'm going to be using those Peking chickens. Oh my goodness. I have, I think this is my fourth one. And so far they sell quickly when I put them into the booth. So I was super excited to come across a couple more paned windows. Because there's just something about putting them in a paned window like they're peeking through that is just too cute. So it will not fit the entire window. So the fix that I do is a mirror effect on the edges that... The paper do, doesn't fill up, but the nice thing about this paper is you have two usages. You could use the chickens or you can use the cows, but I, for this project, I'll be using the chickens. I did cut off the one edge of the hen just a little bit, so it's a little bit more square to fit into the center of this window. So now I'm placing up the upside where it's going to, how it's going to look when it's hanging on a wall. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to center it, take a Sharpie. Sometimes these old windows have marks in them that are just scratches and it's just that perfectly imperfect. So now I'm trying to center it, trying to get the little eyeballs to be peeping through, center it as best as I can. And then what I'll do is I'll take a Sharpie. That way I know where to place my spray. I know where my image is going to go.
that I have my window flipped over, I'm going to be using the Rust-Oleum mirror effect, which is my favorite mirror effect. And I'm doing a 50-50 ratio. I have water in this spray bottle along with some distilled vinegar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put sprays, some water droplets on where I want the old mirror to look. So if you put your finger over the spray nozzle a little bit more, you'll get bigger drips to really give it that old looking, you know, where the, the mirror has scraped off with time. Or if you want a little bit more of a mirror effect, you don't have to put your finger over it. It's just whatever, however you want to play with it. I, I love doing this old mirror. I have good luck reselling the old mirror effect with almost any image I've put on. This is where the Sharpie lines come in handy. You can see where you need to not really spray or go really lightly as you're fading into the image. So as I'm putting it on, yes, mask up. This is stinky stuff. I'm a fan going. And then I need to let it dry before moving, removing the water droplets. And I just take a some Kleenexes and once they get wet, I grab another set of Kleenexes. Um, that way I don't, it doesn't leave any prints. The Kleenexes usually don't have any pattern on them, but as you can see, it starts to dry and I'll do a couple layers so that I really get that mirror effect. I want to distress the edges of my paper. I don't want to have that square. You do sometimes see a little bit of the paper through the mirror effect. So all I'm doing is taking my mouse sander, just letting it eat away, tear away at those sides. You can do that with a wet, um, you can wet the sides down just a little bit using a paintbrush and then tear them away if you want to. I just find it just as easy just to take my little sander, give it a little bit more distressing, but you want to go in very gingerly. And you see I have it on a piece of wood and I'm definitely holding my paper so that sander just doesn't take control of it. Oops, I guess I didn't have my camera on when I made my cuts. So this time I'm going to try, I've done a six pane before and I didn't cut the paper, but I saw Royce cutting her paper for an image and I thought, okay, maybe I can cut this also. So I'm cutting it down to fit into the windows. So I think this worked out just fine. I think I could have actually cut a little bit closer, but you still, it did not affect the image on the opposite side at all. So I'm actually using polycrylic to glue my paper down. Polycrylic, Mod Podge, any kind of a medium that some of the companies carry will will work just fine so i'm just trying to make sure that i still have it centered try to the best of my ability so my little eyeballs are peeping through that window pane putting on this bottom piece I re-wet or sealed in the other side of the paper with the polycrylic that way I could make sure that I really is really matching up my chickens and that seemed to work out just fine then I like to add one more layer of paint I have this goldy bronze color and I will admit to you that my paper is not completely dry by any means 
but it all seems to work together. I feel like it really fades in those sides, adding the dimension of the other color and then having the paper still be a tad bit wet also seems to blend it in too. So when I bought these stools at the state sale, the lady said these were my brother's shop projects and they have been around for years. So this will be a fun project. These things are a beast. They are super heavy and were made to last. This was a family of six kids. So if they made it this far. So now I just have one of the little pegs that's holding it in was a little loose. So all I'm going to do is go in and hammer it back into place this one is just stained or aged i'm really not sure um but it is unfinished so i'm just going to go over with some 220 sandpaper just making sure that it's nice and smooth take any you know just prepping it properly giving it a good scuff sanding sometimes those edges were a little bit raw to the touch so i'm going to go ahead and make sure that they are smooth So I don't know about you all, but I do not mind going in and hand sanding those raw edges that seem to collect dust, bunnies, and cobwebs. I like to make those nice and smooth so they don't attract all that. So I'm really not going to separate these two out too much other than the other one it must have been an upgraded shop project because that one actually has a top coat on it. So this will be interesting. So I need to go in and scuff sand that to get that down some of that top coat. So my paint has something to grip onto and get that cleaned up just the same way. Now that one was not loose at all. I didn't have any hammering to do on this one. I protected my tops because I want to keep them the way that they are, but I'm going to go ahead and spray these pieces using the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black, especially when it comes to any spindly legs like this. I know they're not very spindly, they're big and chunky, but to prevent drips and runs, if you can spray it, it's a little bit nicer and a little bit faster to spray it. I use a lot of Rust-Oleum's black flat paint, <laughs> so yep, I'm just going to get these sprayed up and then I'll have to flip them over to be able to do the areas that I missed with that first coat but I still do look back to make sure that I don't have drips and runs if you hold just two seconds too long next thing you know you have a pile of paint piled up and it starts to run so after completing it I always go back around and make sure that I don't have any of those and then after my black paint is dry I'm going back in and I'm sealing it in with some polycrylic So did you see my last reveal of the paper that I just got from Rocycle's site on Zazzle? Oh, I'm so excited. This came just in time for these stools. So 
or little benches, whichever way, whatever you want to call them, stools, benches. <laughs> but oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get to use it. But I don't want to cut into my chicken. I want that number three. So I looked at it the other way, but I didn't, that's not really the way that somebody would set the stool. So I will save that for another project and I will cut it off and I want to wrap it around that's why I kept that raw so I'm going to go ahead and cut that piece off save it for another project and if you remember my reveal of the paper from Zazzle I actually ordered extra of just the plain black and white ticking so I'll be able to complete the stool just not using this half so to glue it down, I'm using a polycrylic again. And when it comes to raw wood like this, sometimes you have to apply, apply a little bit more because that wood will soak it in. So I'm starting off with my edge first. I'm not sure. I've never really wrapped this paper on an edge before. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it stays straight. And you know, when the paper the tissue paper wets. This is not as thick as the decoupage. Somebody asked me that. I didn't really pay attention to what the weight count was, but this is more like a tissue paper like you would wrap a present in. And I like that because it's going to be very translucent, like you almost stamped on something. So, but it's just like any paper, once you get it wet, there is a little bit of stretch. So you need to be very careful as you're applying it. Depending on what color of a surface that you're putting this on, since I'm doing this on brown wood, it looks a little bit more translucent. So if you're put, putting this ticking on a white surface, I'm sure it would be the white of what the tissue paper is. And then I just tore it off as it was still wet because it was easy to tear that way. For the next stool, it's just a hair off on each side that the paper does not completely fit, but I'm not going to try to cut a little piece of the extra ticking. I don't think it takes away from what I'm doing on the stool by any means. And it's funny because this one was sealed in with a polycrylic. It didn't turn as dark as the smaller stool did, but that's the neat thing about doing projects as you are applying different techniques or using different products, you kind of like, oh, well that turned more brown. Oh, this one stayed a little bit more white. That's why I mentioned the white paint. If you really want this to look like that black and white ticking, then I could have painted these white, which of course I always order. And when I ordered from Zandasol, it comes in twos. So even better. I always love to have extra. I, I very seldom do especially the decoupage or the tissue paper like this. I very seldom do I ever even only order one. I just can't help myself. I never can wait when I place an order. I get so impatient for it to come in the mail. <laughs> And then now that my uh, 
paper is good and dry, I'm taking a 220 sandpaper. I wanna make sure that everything is nice and smooth. And I'm gonna use that same sandpaper on the sharp edges of these chunky legs on the bottom, just revealing that sharp edges, that natural wood, I think it's just really going to tie this top in with this bottom. Then I have it sanded smooth. I have it the way I distress the way I like it. I'm going back in with some spray polycrylic. I want to make sure that that paper is going to be on there. There's no worries about it getting wet and coming off. And then as I'm doing that, I'm making sure that where I sanded it or anything, I'm tucking in any of those little frayed edges to make sure that they are attached also. So I'll go in with two coats at least on the top of this and make sure that everything is nice and sealed in. Now that that polycrylic is dry, one more sanding with some fine grit steel wool, and then I'll finish the piece up with some very thin natural wax, just to make sure that everything is sealed in and it is good and protected. intentions that I was going to put paper on this old hot box that I got at the auction for five dollars and then I decided to stop because the date was still oh it's cheddar cheese <laughs> it wasn't a hat box so I decided to not do anything because it had oh my gosh it had this detail on it um yeah and then the where this lined up was just gorgeous. Oh my goodness. So I decided to put it in my booth as is first before doing anything. You know, here I am reproducing stamps like this to make things look old and vintage. So after cleaning it up and letting it dry in the sun, um, yeah, I decided nope we're leaving it as is and if it doesn't sell i can always bring but my gosh come on look at the date i'm just gonna have to leave it a, leave it alone now if it was plain and it didn't have anything i wouldn't feel bad at putting paper on it but nope sometimes you just leave things alone and see what they do So thank you for watching today's video. I know it's a little bit crazy right now and I am just loving every moment of the garage selling and all those sales out there, finding unique treasures like that butterfly. Oh my goodness. So let me know down in the comments below what the item that I found was your favorite, what item did I make over was your favorite. And if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.